Greetings my fellow earthlings and a very warm welcome to you all. Now this is a strange and interesting piece I have for you today. The movement dial and hands are supposed to be from the 1940s, but it seems like it was put into a time capsule and hidden away for the past 80 years. It's a pointer date from Doxa, which feels very dry and rough. You can see how that second's hand is very jittery as I try to adjust the hands. I think someone was saving this movement for a long time, trying to find an original case for it, but never managed to fulfill their goal. And in the end, someone else has acquiesced into having it married with a new old stock case from Maurice, which is a completely different brand altogether, but it's a perfect fit. The original case was probably gold plated, and here is a picture that I found of a piece with the same dial and movement, and you can see that it was a good effort on the case. Oh dear, we have a little gap between the crown and the case, reminiscent of Trouble's front teeth, so we'll adjust the stem, and the date is also changing over at around half eleven, but just look at the condition of that dial and those hands. Initially I thought it may have been repainted, but I couldn't convince myself that it was. This case has some Omega speedy vibes about it with those cool twisty lugs and the lines on it are so sharp and crisp. Now we are all familiar with Doxa dive watches with their cool bright orange dials, but they started life off doing mainly elegant dress watches, more about them later, but who were Maurice? Maurice was also a reputable Swiss brand that started life in 1893 in Saint-Amir. They can even boast of being the first ever official James Bond watch. The company was then acquired by Blancpain and then later by Tissot and probably ended up in the same horological graveyard as the hundreds of other casualties to suffer the quartz crisis during the 70s and 80s. So the movement seems to be running without any adverse issues. The beat error is out quite a bit and it's gaining around 168 seconds a day. So let's get this thing stripped and serviced and running better than it is currently. So, for a movement from the 1940s, it looks awfully clean, but everything feels very groggy and dry. Now, Daxa also started life in the 1800s. It was founded by Georges du Common in 1889, and in the early part of the 20th century, you could find Daxa dashboard mounted clocks with 8 day power reserves in the likes of Bugatti racing cars and other famous automobiles of that time. The pointer date was first invented in 1915 and made famous by Oris, who used them a lot from the 1930s onwards, and continue to be used by them in modern day reissues. In 1936, after Du Common's passing, his grandson, Jacques Nardin, took over and introduced the pointer to the Doxa lineup. That second's hand is going mental as I'm trying to line up the hands, and that is a sign that there is a lot of friction between wheels and pinions due to a lack of lubrication. Now Ducommon's grandson Jacques Nardin also founded another famous brand that you may have heard of called Ulysse Nardin, which was at one point one of my favorite brands only because of Ulysses 31. Ulysses, Ulysses, all the the yes, I'm that old. People often comment on how the pointer provides better symmetry to the dial instead of having a calendar window cut out into the dial, usually at the 3 o'clock position, and I would have to agree. The 31 days of the month are printed on the outer perimeter of the dial, and a hand just points to it, hence the name pointer. Simple and effective, and does exactly what it says on the tin. So you see, instead of all that fancy setup with a date disc and so on, we just have an extra wheel sitting on top of a modified hour wheel that drives the date corrector wheel Two. with a small finger tensioned by a little jumper spring and that's it there's the little finger calendar mechanism this movement is branded Doxa 932 without any ETA or other Abouche manufacturers logos on there but as you'll see later on this movement looks very similar to an ETA 932 from the 40s but due to the heavy modifications of the base caliber by Doxa, I suppose they've claimed it as their own creation. So I've removed everything I've needed to in order to get to the cannon pinion, because it is attached to the center wheel. And now I'll go on to the other side and start off by releasing the power from this manual wind mainspring, even though the case back did say it was an automatic. And we have a little bit of staining here on the balance. We'll clean all that up, don't worry. nice blue hairspring. We've got a couple of screws there to probably remove our cap jewel. I can't see an ETA symbol anywhere but 
this looks very similar to a ETA 932 but that's the 11 and a half line so I do think this is something that docks are probably purchased of ETA as an abouche and then heavily modified it which is probably why there's no ETA stamp on there and they're probably just claiming it as their own this is friction fitted on so we need our special tool Take it easy with this one, it's most likely going to be clockwise. There's not much beautification on this movement. Yeah. Oops, there's another one here. So this whole little bridge or cover looks like it was produced by Doxa and retrofitted on for that pointer mechanism and that's the jumper for it. Then everything else beneath that probably the standard ETA base caliber and you can see Wolverine's been here at some point. Apart from that grease underneath the crown wheel it all feels very dry and lubricant free. This jumper screw, I think it's also holding in this cover plate. The movement does have signs of previous intervention at some point. As we saw, the big scratches, they were either really good with their oiling or didn't oil it at all. Let's separate that in a bit. Now that resembles a lot closer now to the ETA 93T. See if I can find a picture for you. All we have now is the keyless, so we'll just remove that. But having said that, that I think it's had some previous intervention. Some of these screw heads look really clean.
The hole looks very clean and bone dry. Hardly had any sort of use, nothing. So there you go, all pretty straightforward and pretty standard, even with that extra pointer date complication. So let's get this cleaned up and see if we can get it running a bit smoother and winding and setting a bit smoother. So I think this case is sort of new old stock and I don't really want to do anything with it because these lines are very sharp and crisp as you can see but there are some surface marks and swirls so I just want to touch it on the mop very quickly you can see those lines are so sharp you can cut yourself on them but whoever I'm not sure if this protective lacquer is from the factory or whether somebody applied it in order to polish out these false statements just such as automatic so we'll try and get rid of those big scratches in the back and then on the case i'm just going to touch it and then the plexi as well i'm just going to touch it on the mop for a few seconds and see if it comes out any better That's it. See that? Already looking good. Let's try the same with the case. Just a few touches. I think we'll leave that there. Good. So there's a few marks still on there, but it looks nice with that red lacquer on, doesn't it? So let's get it in the wash. And if it comes off in the wash, then it comes off. If not, I'll leave it like that because it looks quite nice there's the case sharp line still there let's just give it a wash and see what it all looks like
everything looking nice and clean. Looks good.
side. Funny, I just drilled a hole for the decorator wheel. Couldn't be bothered to make a post for it. I like it pottery where you can just make yourself a post. So instead, they've gone for the drill a hole and hope for the best option. more Wolverine marks here what's going on I think someone did that on purpose
I'm also gonna adjust the collet while I'm here because the beat error at the beginning was very bad. So which way shall I go? I went the bloody wrong way with the beat error, didn't I? Oh. We still have to work on that beat error. We're getting closer, baby. 1.3. Look at this dial. There's no way this dial is refinished. It looks like somebody was just saving this thing for a case and just put it away all them years and then somebody else decided just to recase it in a completely different just to recase it in anything and look at the hands as well these are all original and the only way that they stay like this is if somebody, somebody did just put it away. Beautiful. So, on a normal calendar watch, we advance the hands so that time is 12 o'clock. So the date changes over then. And the same thing we'll do here. Can you see that printed date track is in this lovely blue ink and looks very classy. The pointer hand is usually in that crescent moon style in a contrasting colour so it underlines the current date making it easily legible at a quick glance. So I'll just file down the stem a little bit to get that crown sitting closer to the case. Do this in small increments and keep testing it otherwise if you go too far the other way you'll need a new stem or you'll have to extend the stem. All right. That all feels lovely now, really smooth. And you can also see if I change the, if I set the hands, the hand, second hand is not as jittery as before, but because there isn't a hacking feature, I think that's more a symptom of the design. I feel like going a bit wild today. And because we have this lovely blue date track on the outer perimeter, I thought I'd go for a nice padded blue strap with white stitching. What do you reckon? Yeah, that looks nice. So there you have it folks. I don't know how some of you feel about a piece like this, but one thing for certain, it's the only one out there and it looks stunning. So if you have a dial and movement waiting for an original case, try getting it married up with something else that will fit and at least that way you can still enjoy the watch until you do find an original case because sometimes the results can be very pleasing. Well I hope you enjoyed watching this one and found it useful. If you did, hit that subscribe and like button as it really helps me out and it only costs your index finger a short journey from the side of your body to the screen. Please look after yourselves friends and take care of each other. The world needs good people to stand up right now. Before we reach the point of no return, if we haven't already, the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. It can be difficult at times as I have found out myself, but at least in the future we won't have to lie to our grandkids when they read the history books and ask us if we did anything to help. Peace, love and God bless. Ta-ra!